Amen. You can go ahead and be seated, but give these guys a hand. Wow. Wow. I am, um, I, I, I am, I am going to be quick today. Um, uh, because I, I want them to share another uh, couple of songs with us. So I'm, I'm going to be quick today. I've only got a 24 point sermon. Uh, so it's, it's going to be fast. If you have your Bibles with you, uh, turn with me to the book of Acts, uh, chapter two for a familiar passage here. Starting at verse 42, Acts 2, 42. If you have your Bibles with you, it's here on the screen for you. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and miraculous signs that were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and they had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave goods. They gave to anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread together in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of our Lord. Father, we pray that you would... Um, have your spirit just fall upon us, opening up our, our eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts given over to you. And we pray, Lord, as we always do, that you would speak today. For your servants are listening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, he was a billionaire who held a seat on the Chicago Stock Exchange who was devoted to his work. She was a saint of a lady. She was devoted to service. And she would serve in her church every time the doors were open. She served the church in any way that was needed. She served in the nursery. She served teaching Sunday school. She served in the kitchen. She served for funeral dinners. She also served the local mission. And she would spend part of her time every single week going to the local mission, spending time there serving the hungry and, and feeding the hungry. She was devoted to the mission. She was devoted to the hungry. She was devoted to the work of God. Devotion means to dedicate yourself, to consecrate yourself. An unyielding promise, a, a deep, heavy commitment. The word devotion at its heart means to have an unwavering devotion, dedication to something. We make promises to our spouses. We're devoted to our spouses. We make promises of devotion, like I will be with you through sickness and through health till, till death do us part. We're devoted to them. We're devoted to our children we hold them in our arms the first time. We look down at that helpless baby and we say, I will be there for you. Oh, we're devoted to them. We, we dedicate ourselves to them. We devote ourselves to our children. Vows and unyielding promises. My wife is devoted to our dogs. The totem pole at my home goes the kids, the dogs, me. <laughs> Some of you think I'm kidding. <laughs> she has a strong, passionate, unhealthy commitment <laughs> to our dogs. When they're sick, she babies them. She takes care of them. She leaves the TV on for them when we're gone. She installed an app that costs money <laughs> called Dog TV for when we're gone so that they can watch other dogs and play with other dogs while we're gone. She has a devotion to our dogs. When you're devoted to something or someone, you are sold out to it. You are all in. It is your commitment. Nothing stands in the way 
of your vow to it. Kind of a weird time for us to be in this passage today, the Pentecost passage, the the birth of the church passage, kind of feels like we should have just celebrated Easter uh, to be here at this passage. But we're starting a new sermon series called All In. And I, I think to really understand what we need to be all into, we need to understand what the church that the spirit of God birthed looks like. This is the kind of the foundation for this new sermon series, All In. We have to understand what we're all in too, and understand what the first church was all into. As, as, a, as a staff and, and as a board, as, as leadership team, we, we've been talking about what it means to be one church. You're going to hear that a lot in this sermon series. One church with one vision, one mission, and one goal. Whether it's the children, which were with us earlier, sitting and lining up the back back there, who are worshiping back in the back now, to, to, to the, the most senior person here. We are to be one vision, a poured out spring of hope. We are to be a part of one mission. That's the great commission. Jesus set forth that, right? To go into all the world, not to stay and sit and wait, but to go and build his kingdom. And one goal, which is to reach the lost, to build the kingdom of God. One vision, one mission, one goal. We're going to be talking about that throughout this sermon series. So the best way to kick off this series about being all in to the movement of God is to look at that very first church that was all in to the movement of God. I want to set the stage. Jesus has died. Jesus has rose. Jesus has appeared multiple times. Jesus promises the spirit. Jesus ascends. And this is where we are. The spirit of God rushes in like a violent wind. The tongues of fire seem to rest on the, the, the apostles there. And then they go out with this and the church is birthed. A people who were devoted to teaching, devoted to fellowship, devoted to the breaking of bread, devoted to prayer. A people who had every, they were together and they had everything in common. A people who sold their personal stuff to take care of others, making sure no one had a need. A people who were together worshiping and praising God with everything that they had and everything that they were. This was a picture of the church that Jesus Christ built. So stay with me, Trinity, God, the father, God, the son, God, the spirit. If the spirit comes in and births this church, then we need to understand this is the church that the spirit of God wants, right? It makes sense, right? So if, if ever there was a model or a picture of, of the church that Jesus Christ wants, it is this church in Acts chapter two. It was a huge building with nice stained glass windows in it and hundreds of pews to fit the multitudes and a baptistry as big as a swimming pool. No, it, it wasn't a building at all. It wasn't brick and mortar whatsoever. And, and I am proud of our brick and mortar here. No one is more proud of this building than I am. But understand, the church was flesh and blood that was on a move for God. Flesh and blood that was participating with God, ushering in his kingdom. That, that's the picture of the first church. That's a picture of what God wanted. And this, this flesh and blood on the move for God was, was doing the things that the spirit wanted the church to do. And all of a sudden, God was adding to their number daily. Those who were being saved, the church was growing and, and it was blowing up because it greatly pleased God what it was doing. I believe God's up to something at SCCN. I can get an amen. It's okay. God is moving. Lives are being changed at SCCN. We baptized 30 some odd people last year. We took in 20 some odd people in the membership just a few weeks ago. God is blessing our partnerships. God is blessing our relationships. God is blessing our discipleships and all the other ships 
God, God is blessing us in mighty ways. I'm just going to tell you a little teaser for next week. Um, this past Wednesday, I got an opportunity to go over and be with the halfway home and speak to these ladies. And um, it's, 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 it's a, a bunch of brand new ladies and a few that have been with us for a little while. And we got to talk and we got to talking about Jesus. Well, several of them just found themselves in a new relationship with Christ. God. Amen. Isn't, isn't that kind of how the Lord works? Yeah. Right? And, and so there's a few of them that may just get wet next week. <laughs> Praise the Lord. These are good days at SCCN. God is allowing us to be who we say we are, a poured out spring of hope in our community and beyond. God is doing great things. Now understand, the brick and mortar at 1617 Milan Road has not changed. The church is not what's happening. The building, the, the, the brick and mortar is not what's on the move. It is the flesh and blood at work here that is on the move for God. And God is doing great things in and through the church. And, and I don't think he's done. You see, I, I believe, and I'm an internal optimist, I, I believe God's just getting started. In, in terms of what God is wanting to do and who God is wanting to reach. God continues to be in the business of using flesh and blood to usher in his kingdom. So the series we're beginning is all about how we can continue to be the flesh and blood on the move for God, participating with God, ushering his kingdom to earth as it is in heaven. This church we read about this morning had four key characteristics that I want to touch on really briefly here this morning, um, how, how they were devoted. Four things that they were absolutely devoted to, dedicated to, given over to, all in to. The first, the church was devoted to the teachings of Jesus Christ. They were devoted to being disciples. They were dedicated to learning about Christ. Peter's first sermon after the day of Pentecost starts in verse 22 of chapter two, it says, people of Israel, let me tell you about Jesus of Nazareth. He performed many signs. He performed miracles. He spoke God's word with authority and he was killed, but death couldn't hold him. Almost sounds like an Easter sermon already, right? God raised him from the dead. Now he sits on the throne. He is the Messiah who God raised to life, poured out his spirit upon us to teach you about him. So let all people know God has made this Jesus Lord. God has made this Jesus Messiah. And people began to flood into the apostles' feet to hear more. They couldn't get enough Jesus. You see, Jesus was the answer to everything. There's, there's an old joke about Sunday school. If you don't know the answer to what the Sunday school teacher is asking, odds are the answer is Jesus, right? That was the old joke. The answer to everything in the early church was Jesus. The answer to everything in the early church was Jesus. Everything was about Jesus. They wanted more and more and more Jesus. They needed more and more and more Jesus. They could not get enough. Jesus, they were devoted, dedicated, given over to, all in to the teachings of Jesus Christ. The second thing, they were devoted to fellowship. The Greek word here that's used for fellowship is koinonia. And koinonia just means that um, I, I like sharing life with. They were together. They, they spent life together. The Spirit filled the New Testament church we see in our scripture this morning, and she devoted herself to koinonia, to, to each other, to, to one another. The discipline of koinonia means that they acted a certain way toward each other. Did you know one another appears together? Those two words appear together in the New Testament over 50 times. I think it's important. Love one another, encourage one another, be devoted to one another, build up one another, be kind to one another, accept one another, serve one another, have concern for one another, confess your sins to one another, forgive one another, teach and admonish one another, pray for one another, don't judge one another, don't slander one another. We, we could go on and on and on and on and on. One another 
is a key picture of the church of Jesus Christ. Fellowship, together, koinonia was important to God. This picture of the church that is birthed, the church that Jesus Christ wants, was a picture of one another. You know, the more and more I hear people say, do you really have to go to church to be a Christian? The more and more I come back to this passage and this understanding in the New Testament church that Jesus birthed, and I say, yeah. Now, now, do you have to go to church if you're saved? Maybe that's a different answer. But to be the church, you can't do it by yourself. It's a calling to one another. One another has to matter. You can't stay to yourself and be one another. You can't stay to your church and to yourself and be the church. The third thing, I'm flying through these. Hopefully you're staying with me. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. Now, now this, this is key. This is very important because we've lost this in our culture today. This, we, 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 we even call the Eucharist today, uh, breaking bread together, right? In remembrance of Jesus Christ. They were doing this constantly, but there's more than just this that's going on. Putting your feet under the same table as someone else was a declaration. You are family to me. Now, after service today, Nathan and I might go to lunch and we might go to Arby's and, and have an Arby's roast beef sandwich. Doesn't mean much. I love Nathan. Nathan loves me. We're buddies. And hey, we have a good lunch together. In early days, that's not what this was talking about. To put your feet under the same table as somebody else is saying, Jan, you are family to me. I am given over to you. You are given over to me. We will break bread together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This was, this was a deep commitment that began to happen in the early church, breaking bread together. No one hoarded a food and kept it for themselves in this picture of the early church. No one went hungry in this picture of the early church. Everyone combined what they had with others in remembrance of what Jesus did for them. Every time we participate in the Eucharist communion together here, we come up, we get it, we take it back to our seats. And I say, we do that because we're going to take together because we are a good family and good families eat together. And as long as I'm here, that's the way we're going to do communion. I believe it's important. I believe it's important. The, the early church, this picture of the church that Jesus birthed was a good family that was together. That put their feet under the same table, making declarations that they were absolutely family together. The fourth thing, they devoted themselves to prayer. Not off again, on again prayer when you think about it like we've been accustomed to, but communion and prayer, continuous prayer, constant prayer. I, I think of, I think of um, uh, the, the, the passage in Acts 12, I believe it is, when King Herod's about to kill Peter, and, uh, and, and it says that um, uh, this was a, a dark day in the life of the church, um, and, and it, it says that the church was earnestly praying. The church was praying hard, not, not just right before a meal or, or not just saying a prayer right before bedtime or right when you wake up or as a part of your devotion kind of practices. They were devoted to prayer. They were deep into prayer. They were given over and all in to prayer. They were earnestly praying, intense effort, putting forth all of this effort. They didn't just say a prayer or two for Peter when they thought of him. They didn't just gather in a circle and do a quick circle prayer where everybody said a couple of seconds of prayer. They earnestly prayed. They prayed hard. Someone asked me recently how you, how you pray hard. What, what, is it, what does it mean to pray hard? And I said, you, you can have a conversation with someone that's casual or you can have an intense, eye contact, focused, deep conversation with someone. That, and that's the difference between just a casual prayer and absolute devotion and praying. I want you to know these four things that we briefly talked about this morning are not just some cute four-point sermon I thought of in my office. 
These were four key elements that made the church, the flesh and blood on the move for God, the church. And it's because they were devoted to these things that God blessed them. And God added to their number daily those who were being saved. God was pleased because they were devoted all in to being the church, to being flesh and blood on the move for their God. Are you? <laughs> Don't answer this, make it rhetorical, but, but how all in are you? How, how devoted personally you? How, how devoted are you? Do you have an unyielding promise and commitment given over to each other, one another, to others, to the church, the flesh and blood on the move for God? Are you devoted? They had what seemed like a good life. Kids, you can come on up. Young adults, you can come on up. Easy street. She didn't have to work because of his money. Life was easy. She could just use her time to serve the church, to serve others, to, to serve the mission. Until one day, she was walking down the road and she was hit by a car. She was left paralyzed and brain damaged. And he was left to quit his job and go home and take care of her daily. <laughs> they made it to church every week. They, they made it to the worship services, but they were late getting there because of him putting things together and getting her ready and getting her inside. And they were early to leave because... Let's face it, they didn't want to get stuck in the crowd and he needed to get her home and take care of her. It was hard for the pastor to catch him, to, to spend time with them and to talk about them and to check on them. So the pastor went and visited them. The husband said the hardest part at this point of the relationship was taking care of her and getting her ready every day. He said, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. He said, I thought I worked hard before. But he was bound and determined to do it because he knew her devotion to the church. And he was devoted to her. So the pastor got the church ready and, and said that the, past, the, the church was going to come in and uh, began to, to uh, get her ready for him. And so the church got a few people to gather and they said, we're going to take care of her. We're going to help her. Um, we're going to be the body of Christ together and we're going to free you up so you can go and do whatever you want to do. A billionaire. He could have flown to Paris uh, just, just for tea, whatever you do in Paris. He, he could have flown to England just to spend a day. The, the church was being the church, getting together and, and, and helping him out. So he was freed up to go and do whatever. Guess what he did? He used his time to go down to the local mission and to serve the way his wife served, to feed the hungry because her devotion was his devotion. One question really quick this morning. Do you go to church? Or are you devoted, a vow, a deep commitment, all in to be the church? This All In series, I believe, is timely for SCCN. I'm excited. I hope that you are too. We are one vision, one mission, one goal. We are SCCN.